This is my assistant for today. Actually, I'm not sure you're my assistant. Uh, the other day she worked with Neri and they made bread together. So uh, I'm not really experienced. I've read a little in the book, but uh, she actually was doing it the other day and we've been eating bread for, I don't know, three days off of that at least. So uh, how do you think we're gonna do? We're gonna do great today. You think so? Yeah. I hope so. And her name is Louisa and you speak English? Yes, I'm trying to get that's, better. That's easier for me, and we'll have to learn the words. Uh, we'll probably end up making like a vocabulary list so that we have English and Spanish okay. bread words, and for almost any project we can do that, and that'll help everybody who comes here to learn. Uh, what do we need to do first? We need to start putting all the ingredients in order, so we check the recip uh, recipes, Okay. and then we can choose which one should we start with. Okay, that sounds okay. good. And I've got the yeast started as well. Um, what I'm doing is adding uh, some hot water to a cup. And what we want is that, that hot water to be uh, not too hot. Uh, right now it's, it's, it's way too hot. And it would kill the yeast if I added it. But as this gets down to a, around body temperature, uh, human body temperature, then we can add the yeast and a little bit of honey. The yeast will start eating the sugars in the honey producing carbon dioxide, and at that point, uh, we'll mix it in with the dough, and the dough will rise. All right. Well, today is a day to make bread. We've had our initial experiments with the new oven, and they've gone really well. We're going to try and smooth the process out a little bit. We've got all our ingredients ready. We've got the, the flour over here. We're just going to use regular flour. Later on, we'll do experiments with other kinds. We've got some honey, which we'll use to start out the yeast. I'm warming up some water right now. Um, so we're going to use living yeast, which I like the idea of. We're also going to use a polvo uh, para uh, hornear, hornear, royal. It's a baking powder. And both of those are leavening agents, which means they make the dough rise and get fluffy. I want nice fluffy bread. Um, what else we got? I bought some pans and pot squirrel. And uh, we've got uh, all kinds of other stuff we can put in this bread. Got my scale ready so we can weigh the ingredients. Usually it's better to weigh the ingredients rather than do them by volume because it's actually more accurate apparently. Uh, we've got our bowls for mixing and uh, we're all set up here for kneading the dough. And we're going to make a little bit too much bread because I like bread and I can always give it to my friends. Uh, other things, uh, so extra ingredients. We have a little bit of vanilla here. This is really good stuff. The uh, Vanilla is actually the seed pod of an orchid, and we can't really grow it here, but I was able to buy some down in uh, Zihuatanejo. Uh, so I put it in some alcohol, some vodka, and now it just smells lovely. Uh, too bad you can't smell that. And we've got some, uh, looks like prunes over here, and some peanuts, in case anyone has a peanut allergy that we don't like, we can take care of them. This is uh, mantequilla. Mantec. which is grasa. Now this is an animal grease, so we wouldn't want to use this if we were making uh, bread for vegetarians, if they were real picky. Uh, so for oiling the pan, we'll, we could have used that. We, we could also use this. A lot of times, uh, this, is, this is an oil it's for oiling the pan up. A lot of times there's spray oils you can buy, but those have always bothered me because then the can later is garbage. It seems like too much material. But this guy, you pump it up and then uh, you can spray the oil like that. And this is a reusable container. The brand here is Mist, uh, Misto. So we'll see how that goes. This is my first time using that. What else? I uh, have a nice book here called The Italian Baker. And uh, this is as we get more advanced and we expand our skills, we'll, we'll start uh, learning about all the different kinds of flours we can use and all the different kinds of ingredients and, and different ways we can do the timing and everything. But for now, we'll be happy if we just end up with bread. One of the other ingredients we are going to use is some, maybe some anise, but even better than that is this. This is a native anise that grows right here on the property. So the, the ground in some spots is completely covered with this plant to during parts of the year. And so what we want to do is collect enough of that and dry it so that we have it all year long. Anytime we can produce an ingredient here, it's much better than bringing it from the outside. In fact, later on, might be nice to try and grow our own wheat, although we might have to calculate how much flour we think we're going to need for the entire year and then how much land it would take to do that much wheat. Um, we have grown wheat here, so it does grow, but it's 
might not be a, a challenge we want to take on. It could be that it uses more land than we want, although that would be suspicious because we're looking at our total footprint. So if we're eating so much bread that we need acres and acres of wheat, well, we'll look at the trade-offs. Um, we'll, we'll do those experiments in the next rainy season. We'll set up like 10 or 20 plots of wheat in different spots that are nicely fertilized and then see what our yield is. We also have some rosemary here to use with the bread. Uh, this was harvested off of a plant right up here. Rosemary grows great here. You don't need to water it or anything, and the plants get like two meters tall. Uh, when I harvest rosemary, I don't like to go out and just chop the branch off. I, I don't want people to do that. Instead, if you use your fingers, you can go against the grain of the leaves and just rip the little, uh, little uh, needles off, and that way the, the wood part remains, and the plant can continue to grow and get bigger. Estoy siguiendo las instrucciones de Nerey. Son dos tazas de agua tibia. Esto no está tibio, está muy caliente. Tenemos que esperar para poner la miel y después agregar la levadura. One we finish already. Es el primer pan que ya nos terminamos. Okay, so we're starting with a uh, what? Now we're going to leave the levadura there. To... The, we're going to leave the yeast. Okay. To get foamy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You do the English that I don't know in those those terms, okay? Okay. Well, that's the thing. That's why we're going to make a vocabulary list. See. So we have because uh, I don't know the these technical words. technical vocabulary for bread. <laughs> or we can just say we're going to put the stuff in the thing and the. Okay, the, we can the, do that. Yeah, but that's not very. But everybody can imagine. Yeah, you can just imagine want. it. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to get to eat any of this bread anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, not even smell it. Okay, I need... We need eggs, too. Luckily, we have chickens. Necesitamos cuatro huevos en total. Y vamos a ver si tenemos... Todavía no. She's busy. I think that Chilino picked them up already. And they gotta be here. So we take four, two, three, four, cover, and. So a couple of other ingredients we forgot to mention uh, is gluten, which is optional, uh, but gluten, I mean, I think the flour already has a certain amount of gluten, but adding the gluten makes it so the, the dough sticks together better. Okay. And we also spoons. need a tiny bit of salt, right? How much gluten do we need? Two, two spoons. Okay, two spoons fulls. Like that? Yeah. Okay, one and two. Yeah. And I don't want to add a lot of salt. I just want to add a tiny bit. Uh, people, I think, salt things way too much. But I was reading, and apparently salt is a, is a useful thing to have in Should there. Should I get it? Uh, sure, yeah. And look, you can see this yeast. We just mixed it up minutes ago, and it's already got a, a foamy top on it. These yeast are in there growing like crazy. They're, they're dividing, and, and they're going to make that dough very fluffy. So we got this all mixed up here. It takes a while to get all our ingredients together because uh, we're not really experts at this, but ideally we'd have a cabinet with everything in one spot and we could just whip this up within minutes really so uh, that yeast almost ready yeah so it's ready all right okay cool there we go yes let's go oh I should mix while you're doing it I think I read something about that once no no you do it I don't know what I'm doing it you do it <laughs> <laughs> you just have to mix okay well I can mix yeah, yeah. Okay. in case it's not that good the first one is going to be your responsibility. I just <laughs> tell you what to do. Yeah, you always got to know who to blame. Uh-huh. Well, this is going to be both. <laughs> Let's see. ¿Qué está pasando allá adentro? It's getting sticky. That's the way it has to be. Rawr, and thick. <laughs> Very doughy. What a coincidence. How is it feels? Hard? Feels fine. It's getting better. Look at that. It's kind of, yeah. Doesn't look very appetizing. <laughs> Not yet.
Ahora vamos a put a little bit of harina. Flour. Flour. For me, it looks like flour. Flour. So it's harina, okay? Y lo vamos a poner aquí para amasar. Y nos va a faltar más harina. This is my first time doing this, okay? It is? Yeah, it is. Look. Oh, so the Look. other day Neri did you it. see? <laughs> I saw and wrote what, what she was saying. Now, this time, my first time. I think it's ready. That was fast. Is it ready or you just got tired? No, it's right. I think it's ready. <laughs> well, I, I think it's, this is the way it has to be. So the levadura can start take um, fluffy, how you say? Uh, can make rise, it, uh, make the dough rise okay. and make it fluffy, yeah. Okay, para que crezca y entonces ya poderla poner en el molde para meterlo al horno. Vamos a hacer el otro. We might have to work on our measuring skills. Uh, flour's a little bit messy. You gotta, you gotta show them this. Oh, you, you mean the, oh, the mess? Uh, yeah, all the mess. She made a big mess. No, she, he did it. She's a messy person. He did it. That's why he did it. She doesn't even speak good see? English. See? You can't trust her. <laughs> Here, let's see what happens to the dog. Hi, dog. <laughs> 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 what happens to you? <laughs> I have a camera. I have a camera. <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> One of the questions I have is, is how long we should let the dough rise for? Because inside there, the yeast is all producing carbon dioxide, and that's what's making it fluffy. Uh, I asked that online, and uh, I got answers like six hours, so you can do it, you know, the next day. So we've been doing them pretty quick because I think we're impatient and learning. But I want to go ahead and make one batch today that we actually leave and bake tomorrow. I want to see how big and fluffy we can get it. The thing I just said about the dough rising, uh, that's true if it's yeast dough. Apparently if it's baking powder or baking soda, you, that's a chemical reaction that happens really quickly and it happens in the oven. So you want to get that puppy in the oven right away. Not puppy. You want to get that bread in the oven. The puppy does not go in the oven. <laughs> puppy is the one. Hola, hola. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> 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 otra vez, otra vez. <laughs> <coughs> Nosotros oliendo... Ok, vamos a decir. Ah. <laughs> Nosotros oliendo miel y oliendo amaranto y romero y él ah, oliendo pegamento. <laughs> That's a good dog. Be mellow, relax. Well, uh, we have a security problem in the baking area. That dough that was rising, <laughs> this is not good actually. It's rising somewhere uh, else. And uh, a dog apparently ate it, one of these two. It's, it's either Sebastian, who's already fat, or oh, Luna. Sebastian. And whoever ate that, that's, yeah. that dough in there is going to start, uh, oh my. Oh my. it's it? going to continue expanding. You did it? it it's probably him. Yeah. He's a thief. Uh, I wonder if I should make him barf. Vomitar. I mean, they could fucking... I don't know, but it was... Mucho I know. A huge amount. See, uh, I might have to go... En... Bueno, vamos a hacer otra vez el pan blanco. Porque Sebastián se comió toda la harina. Y ahorita Brian fue a ver si... Le hace daño al perro comerse tanta masa sin cocinar o se le va a inflar en la panza y le va a hacer daño. 
Brian went to find some information about dog eating dog and see if it's going to be bad for him. But in the meantime, I'm going to make it again. The same process that we did before, which is white bread. Dejamos la levadura. Y vemos qué pasa. Y cuidar al perro que no se la vuelva a comer. Esta ya quedó lista. Es la de pasas. Esta tiene miel, tiene pasas. Tiene un poco de canela. Y la vamos a dejar reposar para ponerla en el horno más tarde. Muy lejos de Sebastián. Aquí la dejamos y seguimos con el, con el blanco. Nos falta aquí un huevo. Y so, uh, the belief is Sebastian uh, ate this dough, it's rising. I looked up on the internet real quick what to do about it, and apparently a teaspoon of hydrogen peroxide per 10 pounds of dog is what I need to get into his throat. Unfortunately, when I returned ready to do that, uh, he could tell probably by the tone of my voice and actions that I was going to do a medical thing to him. And because, uh, you know, I've injected him with deparasiting shots and things. And so he uh, and some other dogs ran away. So. Uh, whatever happens, uh, hi, he's coming back. He's not a very smart dog. So, we'll just, uh, Chilino, ¿Puedes pasar por este lado? Él está aquí cerca. So, we're going to nail this guy. Anyway, so, uh, would it be better to leave him in uh, with the, the, the dough in his stomach growing? I, I don't think so. So, if I can make him barf it up, that would be great. Um, like most projects I get involved with, uh, something... <laughs> Unexpected always happens. Um, in this case, it's a dog problem. So he's getting closer, so I'm going to act innocent. I have no idea. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. Hi there. Hi. Um. <sighs> I think I'll do it. That's why he runs away when I, when I do medical things. <laughs> and I don't exactly have the best bedside manner, probably. Now, it could take up to 20 minutes for him to vomit. Puede ser 20 minutos para vomitar. No soy seguro. We'll find out. <sighs> yeah. So I need to kind of quickly get this fire going here. I can use some waste paper. We try not to have a lot of waste paper. I actually got this from the market. But uh, if you have other waste paper, then one of the things you can use it for is starting fires. I kind of have to hurry up because the, the bread with the baking powder is already being made. The dough, I mean. The dough with the baking powder. And that's supposed to go in the oven right away. We can leave the dough, the, the yeast dough for a long time. The other thing we can use to, to start fires are these little uh, egg cartons that we ripped up and we filled with uh, resin from the pine trees. It lights up really well. Nice thing about that resin, the resin is it burns really hot. Uh, the other option is to use something called a cote, which is a, a type of pine. When a pine tree has been damaged, it'll overproduce resin and make a very resinous wood. Now, this oven currently looks pretty bad. It's uh, uh, just kind of a hole in the ground right here in this part. See that? 
uh, but we can clean that up. We're going to mix up some cob and improve it. The oven overall is just made with a couple barrels and I'll describe the design of that to you in a minute. Looks like that'll be going just fine. I'll uh, tell you how this stove works. I'm pretty proud of it. It was a quickly made design and I wanted to, to keep it very simple. So what this is, is a small barrel inside of a bigger barrel and it's held up with some bricks in there. And uh, in the big barrel, the bottom has a, an area cut out and the fire is right underneath that area. So that heat goes into the big barrel it, and, and all that hot air then is trapped between the small barrel and the big barrel since we've put dirt here. Also this chimney in the back comes off the bottom of the big barrel. So, so that smoke and all that heat goes up and fills this barrel and has to only, can only get out in that lower hole. And it draws just fine, you can see that. We're getting lots of heat out there. After the fire gets going, the smoke comes out really clean. So it, that means we're getting a very efficient burn which makes efficient uh, use of, uh, of wood. Now, for now, we're using a, just a metal door here, a little thing there to block that and uh, make it get really hot in there. The thing about this particular oven, though, is, is that I have an oven thermometer here. Well, you can already feel it warming up. And it actually gets to over 600 degrees uh, really quickly, like within a half hour. So um, we actually don't want it that hot. Uh, right now the people making bread are preferring it around 450. Apparently different kinds of breads want different amounts of temperature. So, and then I put this on there. So, so the heat's hitting directly in the lower part. And then we can put our bread up here. That way it, it's only exposed to soft heat and isn't gonna burn. Now I can think of some improvements to this oven already. Uh, one is I might want to do a glass door. That way I can see the bread inside. Um, of course we could just get used to timing it right. It does get so hot that it doesn't really hurt to open up the door and check it. In fact you have to if you don't want it to get too hot. Uh, other improvements I'd like to make are I want to put a metal uh, top on here. Probably stainless steel since it's going to be exposed to the rain. And then I'll cob up the sides here. That'll make a flat surface that you could put up there for heating hot water or whatever. So that's one improvement. Uh, if we ever have a problem with it drawing well, then we could make, make the top of it further up. We could put another tube in there, but I don't see the point. Uh, one of the nice things about this stove is that, that the base is just all dirt. We just dug it right into the side of the slope here. And in fact, we're experimenting with other ways of, of, of instead of building things up, we dig them, dig them in. And this is going to be a really good idea for us, I think. I'll be building another one of these right away so you'll be able to see, see how the holes on it are. I might make it so it has two barrels even, a double barrel stove or something, a double barrel oven, whatever. Another improvement would be to clean up this down in here, just make it because this dirt's kind of falling. We could actually mix up a clay and smooth it all out with clay and then the fire itself would bake the clay. It just makes for a cleaner hole. Uh, but not really that important. Uh, the one for the uh, Royal, how you call it in English? Baking the, the powder. Baking powder is already in, but I think the oven is too hot, so I will have to keep it open and closed and see what happened with the baking powder. It's, uh, it's difficult. It's got to be close so it won't go down. Also I noticed that the thermometer doesn't read anything. No. You know why? No. I think it got too hot last time and it burned the thermometer because it wasn't made for that high a heat. Also I'm not gonna pay attention to that thing. I'm, I'm, not anymore. I was thinking that, that it was because no, of that. No I, I think it hasn't changed at yeah, all. You can you can check on the on the fire and uh -huh. it's also it's very hot. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, we're learning how to control all that, but uh, we can't trust the thermometer anymore. What that also means is this oven is probably hot enough to fire low temperature firing pottery. Okay. So we might be trying some pottery yet. I have to read up on, on how that works. But, uh, yowzer, hot. I know it is.
But I, I don't want to open anymore because the... Because we're, now we're not sure. Yeah. We don't know what temperature it this is. This is the first one we're going to put, and the other two are sitting over there. Oh, that there. looks good. This one has the raisins in it? Yeah. Great. Can you see them? Yeah, I see them. <laughs> and this is the one for a white bread, and it's got um, something. Uh, you will like it this time. Okay. Have sandwiches. It burned. Oh, man. And it's not even 10 minutes there. Wow. You see that the oven works very good. The oven works too well. But you know what? It's cooked inside. Yeah. And I think... Yeah, well, we have lots more flour. I know it looks ugly, but I bet it tastes good. Maybe. No, no, maybe. I mean, I think we should eat. We could, we could even try it without even putting the door on. I mean, it's hot. Do we try with this one? Ouch, yeah. I know, it is. Yeah, let's try that. No door. And this way we can see it, too. Okay, now take the time. I don't have a watch. Oh, yeah. And one, two, three. Now. Okay, it's 1040. It's also time for Should you to get a watch. Should we put two of them? No, let's do one, one because one. I don't want to screw both of them up. This is why we're doing this, is to learn. Okay. But I think that it might work just fine. Why don't you push it further to the back so that it's, the heat's more even. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and we are, uh, This is new also, and it's got a different height, so we don't know if the other one we, we knew it. Yeah. How it work, but this one is new. Yeah. Well, the good thing is it gets too hot, and we can always make things colder. I mean, we, we also don't have to have as big of a fire. No. I made a big fire because I, I do that. I it's too big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what she said. Well, if, it, if this tastes good and inside is good, sure. then we know that a cake can be ready in seven minutes. That would be great to find out. If seven we, I mean, minutes. I, I believe we can do them pretty quick. Up in uh, the traditional ovens I've used up in La Zarzamora, they whip the bread in there and they don't leave it in very long. I didn't time it, but it goes in and yeah, five minutes, seven minutes and it's out. Yeah. Yeah. See, this is, this is not working. Well, I know. I, I believe we basically, it was so hot, it destroyed the oven thermometer. So I need one for a kiln because I'm going to start firing pottery in it. Uh, and also we have to learn to control ourselves or me or somebody. Should we close it a little bit? Uh, you, up to Can you. you smell it? The rosemary is uh, because uh, uh, I chopped, uh -huh. and when it's getting it's getting hot, and then I can smell it. So we can see it rising already. It went in at 10:40. It's only been in there two minutes. We're also getting out of the stove top, uh, the stove tube here, very clean smoke now. That's what we want to see because it means we're using the wood very efficiently. So we're now at about seven minutes. About seven minutes and we're not sure if it's done inside or not. Uh, should we stab with a stick again? Yeah. Okay. We have very sophisticated tools around here. <laughs> Oops. There we go. Uh, came out clean uh, and dry. Therefore, I think it might be done. Yeah. Okay. And look we at have the color. Bread. That is beautiful. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. And this uh, oven could probably hold four, four of those pans, is my guess. Yeah. And so if we used coals or some different fire source that's more stable, that means we could do every four minutes, we could be turning out four loaves. Mm -hmm. And so in an hour, we could do 15 times a bunch of more bread than we would ever need. Okay, now in this one, we're going to see how long, because it's different. The pan is different, the dough is uh, uneven, so let's see what happened with this one. Okay. okay. Take the time, and good luck. Okay, it is now 10.48. We're not going to cover the oven. Yeah, I don't think we should. Okay. That's hot. Should I put it back in? No, that's okay, we'll just tell them. So we just flopped this guy over. It looks like it's done perfect. It's the tiniest bit burned right there, which probably means it's done enough. And here's your rosemary. How's it feel? Oh, it feels soft in there. Oh, I'm gonna you know eat what? This. this is better than the other one. Well, it's the, gonna. That's the what texture, we're doing. Look. Yeah, it's. This it's looks different. great. Oh, oh, yeah. Want a bite? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're gonna get burned. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's still still pretty hot. Now let's see what. And uh, this like one's this. rising. Oh, flop that. Yeah. We're gonna try this one. I think it's we don't promise probably anything. burned on there. 
Because I think something. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up. Oops. No. Well, we'll do it in the kitchen, in a table. So we can keep the good parts. We'll do it on the kitchen table? On the kitchen table, yeah. Okay. Not right here. All right. See, because he's not, we're yeah. not sure what's going to Well, happen. I think that one's just, I mean, we didn't know. It's just too hot. So. Está crudo. Ah, sí, también? No, I... Yeah, yeah. Un poquito. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Oh, we... The last of today, look. Look at the color. Looks good. I think it worked. That looks beautiful. Wow. Excellent. Pasas. See, you don't see the raisins anymore. Mmm. This is good. Well, now I'm sure I know who ate the uh, dough because he's getting fatter by the minute and he was already fat. Oh, poor Bericito. Now, the hydrogen peroxide does not appear to have made him vomit. He doesn't seem to be in immense pain. But uh, that's a very Did fat stomach. It? Yeah, it's, yeah, he's super fat. Hi, honey. Um, it's possible I could give him more hydrogen peroxide and try and make him barf. At this point, that big mass of dough is one big piece in there. I'm not sure if he could get it out of there in any case. And I don't have experience with this. I might have to go up to the internet and look this up again. <laughs> what happens if your dog eats a massive bunch of dough that's rising? Uh, yeah, I think I'll do that. Poor guy. You don't, you don't seem to be, he doesn't seem to be any pain. So, barf. You should barf, not on me. Do not barf on me. Oh, it smells like dough. His, he went, oh, he like made a belch. Yeah. yeah, I don't think he's gonna barf though. I don't know what to do. Anyway, I'll go. Yeah, anyway, well, the bread went well, <laughs> except for that first batch. In the second burned. Oh, in the second burned. But that taught us that the oven was too hot, so. Very All educational. So, uh, uh, we thought we were a little more successful than we were. This is still doughy on the inside. I think it really is that the, the oven is simply way too hot. And, of course, not having a working thermometer kind of made that difficult for us. I think what we'll do is have much less fire. Of course, I'll get another oven thermometer. Um, that was the part. But we'll get it right. Yeah, I feel how doughy that is. Yeah, don't push it. Let me, let me see if it works, if we put yeah. it. Oh, like cooking on the yeah. skillet thing, yeah. We'll see. Well, we'll get better at it. We might even try it tomorrow. I don't know. Well, it looks like the outside of the bread is just fine here. So we pull the inside out. This is still doughy. I think we can actually take this, put some tin foil around it, and go ahead and cook it on the fire tonight. Might as well get more experiments out of it. And, of course, next time, <laughs> next time we just won't do it that way. Well, to wrap up bread baking for the day, uh, first of all, the dog is apparently fine, uh, very fat, visibly huge, um, but not apparently, not apparently going to die. Um, and this is a dog who knows how to eat, luckily. So uh, I'd like to say the dog has learned its lesson, but uh, I know this dog, and I suspect that if there was dough out tomorrow, uh, the dog would do it again. So we might have to have a little security uh, on, the, on the bakery there. Uh, other changes, obviously, uh, we want to have less fire. So we'll start it earlier, and then we'll let it die down and just put a few pieces on. And we'll uh, bake with the door off. Um, I know in the traditional ovens I've seen up in a local town that you can see in there. So it'll still be plenty hot, and we'll be able to turn, them, turn, turn it around. So we'll bake it longer and slower. I'm also going to read a little bit tonight about uh, baking temperatures and just kind of, you know, e there's a learning process of sucking knowledge out of these books bit by bit. And so uh, I'm going to look for other things I might not know. I'm particularly interested in how I can make the fluffiest bread possible. So I'm really interested in, in making a dough and then letting it rise a lot longer. That sounds really uh, neat. So the experiments will continue. <laughs>